Hello folks, just thought I would check in, uh, as it's been a, a challenging couple of weeks, but uh, hopefully, oh, hopefully you, uh, hopefully things are on the better side of things. Well, I wait and hope. Uh, been in an extremely lot of pain, and I haven't even been doing spurt box sessions. So uh, and it's the longest time I've taken of doing investigations. In fact, before the lockdown was last our last investigation and we've gone through three summers since and nothing done and I, I you know I feel sort of I feel very frustrated do you know but do you know it doesn't put me off it doesn't make me lose interest as such. Yes, there is times where, you know, I watch a lot of other things. In fact, I don't watch much paranormal on YouTube. Do you know, I might go into uh, a phase of watching car videos or Other stuff, other, you know, well, uh, do you know I accidentally might come across a channel and stuff. Um, very interesting last night, I accidentally came across that some of you may know him, some of you may not. Uh, Simon, uh, uh, GS Paranormal and you know last night the, the, the stream that he was on he wasn't talking about the people that he normally talks about like calling people out um he bought himself some dowsing rods and he was trying to get them to work. Simon is a bit like myself. He's very skeptical of things unless he experienced them himself. But in order to experience those things, you have to try things, and try things more than once. So, a lot of people say, you know, you need to hold your dowsing rods every day. Your body needs to get used to the dowsing rods. I don't think there's anything scientific. Wrote about the use of dowsing rods, I'm not 100% sure, but a lot of people do say, you know, hold their dowsing rods for a while every day, and they'll work. Now, you know, looking at other people, it's very easy to be sceptical about it, and I was myself. After all, they are just pieces of wire that are spinning freely on a inside a hand, you know. Um, but I I used to watch uh, a long time ago uh, was a uh, paranormal series called Northern Ireland's Greatest Haunts, and then there was Britain's Greatest Haunts 
are UK's great and greatest haunts. Uh, and um, there's a guy uh, that was the presenter, uh, a guy called Andy Matthews at the time. And he was a, he is a psychic paranormal investigator. And the only piece of equipment he actually had was the dowsing rods himself. So, you know, anybody that's thinking of trying the dowsing rods, uh, you know, watch some of those, uh, watch some of those uh, paranormal TV shows that are about 13, 14, 15 years old now, or maybe more. And it was shows like that, though, that, that got, you know, got me interested more than the lights of, say, Ghost Adventures and, and some of those, um, some of those companies that are, are, you know, trying their utmost to get as much traction as possible. Those TV shows, for me, for some reason, it works, and it was, it was the honesty of them. It, you know, some of these TV shows, in fact, some of these TV shows, there was hardly you know, at times there was no evidence, there was no great evidence captured, yet Andy Matthews was able to um, capture his audience by the sheer research and history, do you know? Uh, he went to places like Balahi Bon, uh, which is about 20 miles from here. Uh, which I got the privilege to see a number of years ago before I was a proper paranormal investigator. Um, and the reason why I went to Blackie Bond was actually because of that show. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to go to the place, and uh, you know, uh, places like Prehen House. Way back, I got to walk the grounds. Uh, I got to talk to the people uh, and that, um, but it was the history that captured the audience. You know, he would go to a place and get flashing lights in front of me, so there's most likely a speed camera in front of me. Um, he would go to that particular uh, place, talk to some of the locals, get a few interviews and you know by the inter the interviews he conducted that it wasn't practiced and staged you know it you know it was kept together stutters and stammers and all and watching those programs, it, 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 to me, brought more of a reality to the situation than a highly produced program like Ghost Adventures, you know, with its reenactments. I think the reenactments in Ghost Adventures is a little bit too gory and a little bit too negative, you know, and that's what they're going for. Now, you know, the, um, the places that Andy Matthews went to, yes, there was a history of violence in many, many cases, but he did not forget the whole history. He did not, he did not make the, the violent history or the negative uh, incidents 
be the priority of an investigation. You know, he took the whole story into account, which I don't see in 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 uh, TV programs like Most Hunters and and um, Ghost Adventures. You know, and it's maybe because the viewer. is attracted to the negative, you know, and you'll see that behaviour actually a lot on YouTube, what the viewer wants to watch, but certainly those shows were the, to me were the cream of the crop at the time, you know, not early, um, not early uh, Most Haunters or early Ghost Adventures. It was these Northern Ireland's greatest haunts and Britain's greatest haunts. And, and I'm sort of thinking if they were to produce that kind of TV now, would people actually watch? You know, you know, and I, I'm thinking possibly not as much as back then because the perception of the paranormal has been moulded in to what it is today, and to me that's quite sad because. There's a lot more to the paranormal than what we see, do you know? Um, you know, he, these people like Mark Smith, he, he used to do stuff and he was trying to get traction by these clickbait titles in, in YouTube videos and he Let's say he got caught into he got into caught, caught into too many controversies and ended up doing outdoor stuff like camping and stuff and he's a very good at putting those videos together. But recently he's done a few ghost hunting videos and was back doing warning you know, these terrifying titles. And, that, and that's what that what ang that's what angers me a lot. You know, what people are, are, are doing with the paranormal. And, you know, the paranormal was never meant to be a money making thing and well, from sort of day one, you know, people have exploited the paranormal for financial gain, you know, and I have no problem with it, but the clickbait titles, they're, 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 they, they put a bad perception on what the paranormal actually is. And that's what hurts me the most about it. And you know, at times I had said to myself, is there any point in actually showing the public videos anymore? It is, it's, you know? Um, because you know, a lot, a lot of people, they see these titles of scary stuff and that, and then you, you look at the chat, you look at the chat in a, in a live stream and say, oh, this is freaky, this is scary and all this shit, and it isn't. You know, the, the, the person doing the, the video, Mark Smith, this is a professional actually, is winding up the viewer 
to be prepared for an investigation. I don't like the guy, but his tricks of filming is 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 kind of interesting. Even though I, I don't, I I wouldn't like to. I don't like what he does. Is to get the audience attention by saying, "Guys, I'm on my own. I'm scared out of my wits." The last time I came here, I got scared out by a scary demon or whatever. And people fall for it, you know? It's like ghost adventures with the reenactments and stuff. Do you know, to me, what we had done, and we hope to f continue doing is, the kind of raw stuff where it's more sort of natural for the people watching kind of thing. It would be like paranormal investigating in the eye of the viewer. That's that's what that's what I'm more interested in, actually. If somebody, you know, people might say, oh, well, you know, live streams, uh, you know, Mar Smith doing live streams and blah, blah, blah. But live streams with sort of honesty, sort of not, not molding expectations kind of thing. And that's what we want to do. Um, I don't know if the, I don't know if the, uh, camera's going to be able to see this. But, uh, I was watching Paranor the, uh, Power Awakening a couple of weeks ago. And Josh was on. And Josh was talking about... Uh, recorders that he used to use. You know, he'd bring the dog for a walk and he'd have this in his pocket. It's called the, it's an RCA, it's kind of got a green, a yellowy green surround around this screen. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> and he says it's a really crappy, a crappy uh, recorder. But it's it sort of... It's possibly because of the noise that it that it produces that it helps with EVPs. So I thought for ten or fifteen dollars, I thought I'd import one. So I decided that I'd give it a shot, and there was a file. I think there was an art lecturer on this, and I played that, and the audio was audio was. Absolutely, it's it's horrendous. There's this kind of a swirling noise inside the recorder. I don't know, but I will give this a go. You know, uh, when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to advice on on EVPs and spurt boxes and stuff like that, I'm going to listen to a. I'm going to listen to a. a an audio engineer, you know. And Josh is an honest guy. You know, he he doesn't he doesn't uh, he doesn't hype things up. You know. Sometimes he can be a bit sort of worried that sometimes he might be too scientific. And, and 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 people might be bored, but to be honest with you, some of us are very interesting, and hear in hearing what the man has to say, and uh, you know, it's like there's not a huge amount of people that that are teaching stuff. 
not not too many of that kind of caliper. You know, audio engineer who's interested in EVP and, and ITC. You know, um, it's a good combination, and that's why I listen to him. You know, he's a good and honest guy, and and is one of the few people I watch. He's on. He's on. Uh, uh, the Power Awakening on uh, Rob Hernandez's show. Um, I don't get to see a lot of Rob's stuff because uh, of time differences. But sometimes if I wake up early, I will catch it and that. And uh, I come into the chat and people say moo because they're I will never, ever get away from the cow incident. Do you know? I'm, I'm serious about the paranormal. And my claim to fame was going into a house where there was a cow in the sitting room that peeped his head out the sitting room door, scared the shit out of me. Do you know? <laughs> Do you know? <coughs> <coughs> But it's all in good fun, you know? It's all in good fun. Rob is looking for more adverts. And to be honest with you, I'd love to do more adverts. I'd love to do more funny, sort of, tink up of funny stuff. But when you're going through challenges, it's hard to be funny. You try. Sometimes... Sometimes to sort of combat challenges you're going through, you try to mask it with, with comedy. You try to mask it by being funny. And that's okay, but you still have to deal with the challenges, you know? And, and that's one thing that I'm aware of, that, you know, when I start being humorous and funny sort of thing a lot am I masking an underlying issue am, am I trying to mask a, a stressful situation or whatever but the other side of it is There's a lot of negativity in the world, and, and, you know, even recently around here, you know, if police, be, police with sirens coming in every flipping couple of hours, uh, drug-related incidents, there was a major one yesterday, I can't confirm if the person died, but... There was two ambulances came in here. There was another one across the road came out under police escort. Uh, people trying to break into the building and destroy the hallways and stuff. Apartments with un unsecured doors. An absolutely stupid idea. Uh, I don't feel safe in my home, and I just, I want to get out of here. Uh, my sort of goal is to get myself a house, you know, a house where I have a normal front and back door that I can walk out into the garden. I just, I can't, you know, I'm grateful for a roof over my head. But the surroundings is, is sort of I try not to I try not to dwell on the surroundings, what's going on and stuff. But I get told anyway, which is not good. And that's why I stay away from Facebook, you know? But I haven't done a session in a, a, a spur box session in, in, in a couple of weeks because um mind is Mindset isn't isn't fully in focus. Yes, on the second channel, Life After Life, 
ITC research, I do have sessions going out every couple of days, and they were done a couple of months ago. Um, but my mind wants to get, uh, my mind wants to get, and and you know, back to doing more investigations and stuff. And learning from the past, that's what we want to do. Um, I think it was, it was Jack, it was Phantasma Paranormal. Phantasma Paranormal has changed so much in the last uh, number of years. And in the past, he'd done celebrity spurt box sessions, and they still pop up in my recommenders. And I don't like those. And his focus changed. His he, he questioned some of the things that he had believed in, and we all do that. And I think, you know, some people can be embarrassed about some of the past videos they've done, and want to not see them ever again. But it sort of lays down benchmarks you know, of improvements. If you don't have those benchmarks, you don't know how much you've grown within the thing that you're doing. You know? Um the stuff that I uh, the stuff that I definitely have done that I'm I'm not I'm not hundred percent proud of. You know? Um some of the some of the paranormal investigations I won't even look at, but it is a benchmark of moving forward and stuff. And some of the stuff that I'm critical of is 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 one of those things that we want to incorporate into what we're doing try to do things in a different kind of way, not be influenced by the masses, but not be influenced by what everybody else is doing. Because the script, as I said before in another video, every a lot of people are working off the same script. And it seems to be either the most haunted script or the ghost adventures script. You know, the routine is the same. You know? You know, stick out some equipment, some flashy balls and rem pods and stuff like that. And we're trying to think, what well, way can we do it different? And even when we were doing investigations, every couple of weeks I would stop and say, how can I do this different? You know? How can I make a difference? Now, it's not helping me that I'm not doing invest. I haven't been doing investigations, investigations, but you know, personal life and personal health comes first. But I'm crossing my fingers and toes that so I can get back to it soon. I'm heavily financially invested in it. Last while I haven't I haven't invested anything in the paranormal as such. And I don't think I don't think if I was to do it all over again, would I invest in some of the things that I've got? And the answer to that is probably no. Because the most important things is 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 at the end of the day sound and vision. All these other devices when you think about it, are revolved around the same thing. It's it's like, you know, EMF. Whether that helps or not, I don't know. EMF, REM pod, which is basically alarm systems are... Do you know when you put your car in reverse? You can get the, 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 the boards 
for that reverse beeper where you reverse the car and when you get close to an object, it beeps. That's basically what a REM pod is, you know? Um, that's what it basically is. But the official REM pod, I've had them in my hand and quality is not that great. I, I just don't, I don't particularly like them. Um, but I wouldn't, if I was to invest, if money was no object and, and I was to invest in paranormal investigating, you're talking about uh, security cameras, a security camera system, uh, good night vision cameras, the best you can get. Audio, good audio interfacing and uh, doing an investigation with cov with cameras covering as much real estate as possible and audio <coughs> recording as much real estate as possible. You know, that's at the end of the day, that's the um, the biggest thing when it comes to the paranormal. Sound and vision. Do you know? Many of the other things are exper experimental. Do you know? If they were fully proven, yeah, you could say you can invest in it, but almost everything outside cameras and sound almost everything is still exper experimental has been for donkey's years and the financial investment in a lot of that stuff is a gamble that may or may not pay off i don't know <laughs> folks i'm gonna go in i want to have a nice cup of tea um and uh I don't know if you can see in the back. I have racing seats for the for the for for this car. Um, I was in the middle of doing it and found out I had the wrong tools. I've now got the right tools, but when the new tools arrived, which is a funny kind of star socket, the weather changed. It's these kind of things. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. But it's a kind of a star-shaped socket. And I had to get the right size of those to get the front seats in. The back seats are in. But the new front seats are still in the back. So that's why it looks like I'm loaded up with stuff. Which I, uh... But, uh... Yeah... Um, it's been it's been tough. It's been tough and frustrating, but you know, all I can do is look forward. You know, I have a physiotherapy, a first physiotherapy session referred by the doctor, so. That's a step in the flipping right direction. You know, a lot of this is my own fault because I don't complain to the doctor unless I'm unless I'm I'm, I'm really in pain. But recently I cracked and I just says I need help with this pain because it's just you're only on this in this world for you know a short time. And you've you got to make it the best you, you can. And if there's something holding you back, fix it. Do you know? And I will probably regret, regret all the time I've tried to ignore it. But at least it's time to look after myself and see where I go from there. But I'm going to go, folks. I, I want to. I want to have a cup of tea. 
and uh, I'll try and get a session in soon. I'll, I'll hopefully maybe go to maybe the island. Um, the problem is we're having a we're having a little bit of wind. Um, when it, when you get down to the island, it's a lot more windier than it is here. Gradually love the island. Wanted to get it done before the winter comes in, but the time is ticking. So will we get there? Hopefully we will. You know. So folks, I'm gonna go. I'll see you the next time.